I love you. Welcome back to the Couch Potatoes. I am the Green Traveler from Gorsh. Hey, this time you really did like the sheriff from Nottingham really well. Oh, nice. <laughs> I don't know if I could ever do it again. <laughs> I am the face of Leon. With, this that's is the podcast. problem with voice acting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's This is the problem with remote podcasting. Uh, right. <laughs> I am Faceless Leo, and this is a podcast about movies and TV, and it is called Green Faces on the Couch. This is also hey. the Potato Pick. Welcome the potato pick. to the Potato yes. Pick. This you is a made thank it here. you episode to all our patrons out there. Uh, if you want to get a say in what we do in the Potato Pick, go on down to patreon.com slash green and faceless. And you can find out all about how to do that. <gasps> you can make suggestions. Indeed. You can vote. And you can okay. also listen to Bangers and Hash, which we do also once a month. Like the potato. Yeah, you don't want to get in on that bangers market. What? That's where we got all of our new releases. That's I said right. you want to get in on gotcha. the bangers market. I thought you yeah. said you're not yeah. going to want to. And I'm like, <laughs> no, no, you're going to want to. 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 want to. You're going to want to down in Tijuana. Yeah, all y'all, all y'all, just like couch potatoes. You're nice. You little, you know, you you you're a beautiful little potato just sitting on a couch. Mm-hmm. We love you, but yeah, you could be mashed. You could be fried. You you know, you could be something beautiful yeah. and become a patron. Yeah, that's they're, right. They're lovelier potatoes at the patron. You know, we we've done some chef boy RD. That's kind right. Of we'll to dress them. you up, yeah. <clears throat> give you a little Ooh, yeah. uh, uh, sour cream, titles maybe. and everything. Yeah, um, some yeah. chives. Ooh. Mm. Mm. Sounds yeah. good. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like, I mean, honestly, let's let's be. Honest. Do you like a, a cooked potato, or do you just like a regular old potato just sitting there? Not that nothing wrong with a regular potato. That's we right. love you. Regular we love potato. you just as you are. But do you yeah. want to be um, an Earth apple, or do you want to be a, a glistening, <laughs> well boiled potato? Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Sounds lovely. This one, this potato pick, this was brought to us last month. It's a, a suggestion from then. Uh, the holidays, I assume, kind of made it h- hard for people to remember to make suggestions oh, this you're time. Calling them That's out. okay. Well, anyway. I'm calling them out. <laughs> but no, this this came from Don and Mike, uh, our lovely patrons. Uh, they had a uh, it was a it was a Christmas idea, but it That's still works. Right. I think for oh, New yeah, Year's, like well, it's still yeah. pretty good. It's about it's holiday really the week after, really still. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, it's really New nice. Year's. You know, it still fits. <laughs> yeah. That's why. That's why I just said let's let's keep it in there as their suggestion for this month because it's a really yeah. good one, and it also has one of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> yeah. Well, there so, you go. You know. So we're gonna. I won't say which one. You'll have to figure that out by listening. <laughs> That's right. So we first we I got a, a recent release on Hulu. Um, mm-hmm. Excuse me. It is the hap- Not the happiest. I want to call it the happiest season not the, because yeah, not the it happiest. seems like a better title than happiest season, which I feel like is not a great one. Happiest season just feels like a greeting card. Yeah. Um, it also has nothing to do with what happens in the movie. It's the most generic no. holiday movie's title ever. Uh, but anyways, it's yeah. it's uh, written and directed by uh, Clea Duvall. And uh, it, uh, a, a, it is written along with Mary Holland, by the way. But... Right. It is about. I, I guess I'll do the the synopsizing on this. So, um, <laughs> Kristen Stewart plays Abby, who is in love with Harper, and they have a beautiful life together. Harper is played by Mackenzie Davis, and yeah, uh, she really hasn't met her parents before, and Harper uh, convinces her to come spend Christmas with her family because she wants to show her how good Christmas can be. Uh, right. However, 
<laughs> Harper uh, fails to mention that Tipper and Ted, being her parents, have no idea. Actually, no one in her family has any idea. So um, that Harper is gay. That Harper is gay, uh, and with Abby, they think right. Abby is her roommate. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, anyhow, they get there. Uh, that the, she kind of figures this out on the way. Like Abby's plan. Yeah, like on the road. Yeah, even. yeah. <laughs> Abby's plan is to talk to them about proposing to Harper. <laughs> like she's trying to do the traditional route, which is really funny because Dan Levy uh playing John, uh he <laughs> he's like Who is Abby's best friend? Who's Abby's best friend, that's right. Is like what are you doing? You're doing the straightest thing possible. <laughs> I, 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 I love it. I love, love John. His, yeah, I like his part in this. I really just like Dan Levy a lot, and obviously his dad is a genius. Um, <clears throat> right. Sorry that, that that okay. I was I was I was trying to figure out so much. Like I was like, man, who is he reminding? Right. I did not even. Put it together that he's Eugene Levy's <laughs> So they do oh they gosh. do Shits Creek together. I've talked to you about Shits Creek, right? Right, That's right. Such a good show. Yeah, you gotta yeah, check it me. out. They're they're uh they're great together. Oh, Dan is just That's so it, funny. Dan really is just he's got you could f- sense his father's humor in there, but it's a completely different person. And and he's yeah. wonderful and and and, yeah. and bubbly. I just love him. So You've got good delivery too. Yes, he is My oh God. so funny. Yes. He even has an emotional scene in, in Happiest Season here near That's the end. That's right, he does. Uh that I, I really just enjoyed it because it was, it's one of those like you know, one of the beautiful things about comedy is when it can hit you with a right. like good, strong emotion. And I mean we'll talk about the, the third act later here, but I, I think that he especially really nailed that that emotion delivery. Yeah. Where it's just like you've been making me laugh all movie. And then you say you say something, and I'm just like, oh, teared. Like, yeah, my goodness. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, uh, it's good. Yeah, yeah, it's a good. <laughs> <laughs> so they're also just very conservative. Besides the fact that they don't know, yeah, that Harper is gay. Uh, uh, Ted is played by Victor uh, Garber, who's you know yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows him from something. Uh, yeah. He's the dad in I'll always think Randy of- Cinderella, the king, that is. Right. Uh, and <laughs> I'll always think of him as the 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 fire starter. Yeah. Or not the fire starter, fire but storm. fire guy in yeah. <laughs> is it Firestorm, fire storm? thank you, in Legend of Tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, I, I'd seen him in thousands of things before that, but then he was just in that, and I'm like, yes, this is great. <laughs> I enjoy this. Uh, it's, it's strange. It was very strange to see him in that. But fun. Anyways, he's married to Tipper, uh, who is played by Mary Stenbergen, who everybody also knows from something. Um, <laughs> they, they, it's the pr- pretty typical parents for this movie, I feel, uh, Especially if you're going for that, like, <clears throat> conservative feel, conservative family feel. I think these pa- yeah. this pair fits pretty well. Uh, Did you mention that Ted was, uh, was, a, he is was a the mayor? Like he is a, yeah, he, he's yeah, trying yeah. to become the mayor. And he yeah. is on the town council, I think. Yeah, um, yeah and, something like that. Yeah, so he, you and, know, and his, he's definitely... Their family is just part of the GOP though. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then and their family is just devoted to to perfection. Yes. Well, I say their family. Tipper Tipper and Ted specifically are, are devoted to everything looking perfect, being perfect. That's right. You know, trying to appeal to the voter base at all possible times. Mm-hmm. Which is hilarious because I mean this movie does come out in 2020, but I don't feel like a lot of politicians these days really try to appeal to the voter base anymore. No. Like I feel like they're all they're all some kind of whack a Wackadoo anymore. Well, I think that they are appealing to their Certain voter base. Their yeah. voter base. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. It's, just, it's <sighs> sadly true. Yeah. There's some people that I just look at in our, in our politics, I'm just like, why did they vote for you? 
I don't understand. It was, like, <laughs> it was a large enough group to get it to happen. I know. It's, oh, it's scary, man. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> but we're not here to get scared. We're, we're here, here to have the happiest yeah, season. happiest season. Sorry. Yeah, not the happiest <laughs> season. Just the ha- happiest season. So, uh, Harper has two sisters. Um, I believe yes. she's the youngest. And the oldest... I think she's the middle. Well, I'm pretty sure... I thought Jane said my eldest... My youngest sister at one point. But... Oh, maybe. maybe. I just... I feel like being the left out one... Always, well, maybe that is a middle child thing. I don't know. I've only ever been in a, a two-child group. Yeah. So... I'm not sure. Well, there was six children in our household. So... <laughs> uh, that throws the statistics off for a little bit. Y'all get clumped into different groups. Yeah. Yeah. So... Sloan, I believe, is the eldest, anyways, and she's played by Allison Bree of uh, community fame and other fame as well. Uh, and she <clears throat> is always in competition with Harper. And she was a big time lawyer at one point, both her and her husband, Eric, who is Burl Mosley. And uh, they both quit, and now they make gift baskets for rich people. <laughs> Um, right. Yeah, and apparently it's good business. And they have twins. So. I don't remember what the twins' names are, but they're like really obnoxious <laughs> for being really young kids. Uh, uh, Matil- Matilda and Magnus. Matilda played by and a- Magnus. A- 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 oh, they are they are actually related. Oh, no. It seems. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get their last name wrong, so I apologize. But Asia and Anis Nobe. Awesome. Uh, well, they were yeah. funny. I will give them that. Uh, they definitely have, yeah, they have- uh, a good chemistry together, which makes sense if they are siblings. Right. Um, yeah. Little screen time, but I think that's for the best because I think while they are, you know, while they are utilized well, yeah. I feel like any more screen time, I mean, you would have fallen into the, the hazards of like making the, this. I don't want to call or something. I don't know. Well, having bad kid actors. Right. Like, because. Uh, right. I've I've always I've always been of the opinion that you don't have bad kid actors, you just have directors who can't direct kids. Right. You know, you can, and that's just really the thing is like most kid actors are good. They can be good. You just have to work with them right. Right. And I I don't want to call out Clea Duvall, but I feel like she did just good enough with these kids and help and handled them well enough that you don't, you know, they don't have as much screen time. They're they're kept just where they need to be. Right. Any more time, and you probably would have seen that they're you know they don't right. really fit with the chemistry of everybody else. Yeah. And and you know it, it's not about really Sloan and and her kids at all. Anyways, it's no. it's about yeah. Abby and and Harper in the long run. Uh, but it's it's about Abby learning about all this background about her her um her lover and trying to <clears throat> navigate, you know, <laughs> not letting it slip out that they're together, even though she's been openly gay for most of her life. Uh, right. So it's and very it also, strange for her. It, it, it's also like nerve wracking because as you said, she was going to, she was going to propose. So now right. she's like, now she's confronted with all this change and she's like, do I even know this person yeah. I'm in love with? Like yeah. you have that, that age old story of like, I don't know if I really know you. Like, yeah. Uh, so, Are we ready for this? <laughs> so I don't think I mentioned uh, that Jane, the other sister, was played by Mary Holland. Um, I just want to throw that out there. She's really funny yeah. in this. Uh, she is a strange individual. Um, very quirky. Very quirky, yes. But she loves that about herself. That's what I love about Jane is that she loves Jane. I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, that's what that's what I really liked was like I I do enjoy what's going on with with Harper and Abby, but I really like Jane's involvement yeah. throughout the whole film because it's like watching her just finally get to a point where she's like, you know what? I like being me, yeah. and I'm just like, yeah, fuck yeah, yeah fuck Jane, yeah, like <laughs> Jane. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> I know that was like the best part of the movie for me, but you know, it it, it it's great too because her little. B or C plot, whatever, really just speaks back to what the movie's trying to say too. Is like you gotta be yourself and you gotta love the person yeah, exactly. that you are. Yeah, 
And yeah, don't don't mold yourself into your family's vision right. of you. Be be who you are. Yeah, and and not even just your family's vision of you, but anybody's. That's vision. right. You have to be yourself, yeah. and you can't live a lie. That too, like exactly. you, you, like Jane is very honest about who she is with everyone. And right. yeah, so she's like the shining example of who you should be. Everyone be like Jane. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember this family's last name. Um, I don't. Did they even mention it? Do they have one? I don't know. Oh wait, hold on. It's in the it's in the Wikipedia's Caldwell's. The Caldwell's. Well, boring to say the least. <laughs> uh, it doesn't go well, and we'll leave that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do think we have one one other important character to oh, talk yeah. about, which is Aubrey Plaza. Oh, that's right. Uh, Aubrey She's Plaza in is in it. I thought, yeah, she plays Riley, who is uh, Harper's ex girlfriend, and right. she's kind of a red herring for most of the story. And so, like, that was the last uh, thing I wanted to talk think about was that she might have an affair with Abby. Like, right? But that doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's very weird because like that, it's those little things about the plot that my only issues, like to 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 bring up my cons for this film, um, and they're they're very nitpicky, so like don't don't read into them honestly. <laughs> but it's just like uh, most of the plot is very kind of textbook. You know, you kind of expect a lot of what happens to to yeah. happen, and then when you get certain dialogue at the end. Even though it's real, even though I've had certain conversations that have fallen very similarly or I've heard other people have had conversations very similar to like, um, to, to let's just like to an outing event, somebody coming out or being outed. Like a lot of that dialogue is very pretty much cliche in this movie. And, and it's not, it, it kind of falls flat in regards to emotional because it, it just kind of feels like, you know, it's, we're trying to hit all the right check marks for, right. for this scene. And, so it's like it's it's very weird the the Aubrey Plaza character Riley because you have you have the story that I really do like I I know it sounds like I just shit it off, shat on it right. everywhere but like I I really love it I love the telling of it I'm not saying any of any of the textbook qualities bring it down it's just being very ABC you expect this this story the story arc with Riley with Aubrey Plaza's character and and Abby Kristen Stewart's character you expect something to happen yeah and all and nothing really comes of it except for like one line where where Riley's just like hey Harper you've got a good girl here and then just kind of walks away and I'm just like that was it that was all this was coming to like yeah so much well, I think like, like fake the, tension and drama I think what the big part that was supposed to happen between Riley and Abby is that she gets this information about Harper from Riley. Right. Like, yeah, this is, this is not, this is not just now heart. This is not the first relationship that she's kept hidden from her family, from the world. Right. Yeah. This is a pattern. Like you said, so it, it's very troubling for Abby. Uh, it does add right. more conflict to her relationship with Harper. Um, yeah, and that is important. <laughs> it's just then there are then there are other scenes where, say, like um, there's a moment where uh, Abby and Riley are shopping, and Harper's in another store, and she looks out and sees, and she's like, "Oh no, my current girlfriend is with my ex girlfriend." Right. All these issues this causes me, and that goes nowhere. Like, it really just kind of, like, there, there's, like, half of a second where you think that Harper and Abby are going to talk about it or be, con- like, confront about it or say something. Yeah. And they just kind of blow it off I, with I one sentence. I wonder if there's, like, a scene that was deleted. That's what I'm thinking. Where yeah. uh, Harper finds Abby at the house at one point and is like, what's up with you hanging up with Riley? Hanging out with Riley. Like, and it becomes right. an issue with them and they fight a little yeah. bit more. Um. Yeah. You know, I think it's just, what it's just Harper is stuff doing like is enough to drive Abby away, which is kind of what where the plot heads. Um, yeah, but like, at, like I think a scene like that could help a little bit more because Abby is already like 
really putting herself out there by pretending to be somebody she completely different than who she is. And then she's going to complain about who she's hanging out with, like Mm -hmm. who she's going to, to try to be a little bit more herself for a moment. Like, yeah, that's, that's bullshit. Something like that would have been, I think, I feel like there was, but yeah, I feel like there was like a deleted scene and I feel like it must've just been because that, that final act is already very tense. It's already got a lot of drama in it. So maybe they're just like, we'll we'll cut this one scene that's not entirely really necessary because you do get everything you need with Riley with Aubrey Plaza's character, and Aubrey Plaza is very enjoyable in this. It's not a, um, it, it's it's not really the kind of like she's not like you know crazy big eyed like you know kind of like <laughs> slightly off putting w- woman that she usually is typecasted as. She's you know just a normal like I am just here to be Aubrey Plaza and like it's yeah. nice to see her in these kind of roles because right. I like her in the off-putting roles but I feel like she just she's always cast as she's that the, and I haven't seen Emily the Criminal yet she's so the I Christmas to, witch. I get on that <laughs> yeah I do well I love that I do love that <laughs> role <laughs> but it's just like I like seeing I like seeing her getting she's these so other funny. big yeah like I um, like her in a more um hmm uh, subdued and dramatic yeah like, like <laughs> just an average role she does it very well but i think it also yeah. just plays to how well she actually is doing in in roles say like in legion that first season right. of legion is, is nuts yeah i i still again she's been in there's this movie called emily the criminal that i hear is really good and so i gotta get on it but yeah, oh yeah i did see that yeah 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 She's she's good, she's but good. but very yeah. small role in this, really. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's really uh, that's happiest season. Like, yeah, I don't really have much against it other than the the there's occasional like chemistry moments where it just like kind of fell off. I mentioned the kids already, where they just kind of didn't really fit. Well. <laughs> like, I, I like the kids. I'm not gonna t- narc on the the twins at all because they, they did a good job. It's just there's moments where you can feel the tension was or the chemistry was like slightly off where mm-hmm. it's like you're not my real parents why are you telling me this like kind of a feel <laughs> <laughs> like it was, it was kind of off and, and there's there's other moments with everybody else and, and I think it might just be attributed to the fact that it, it was filmed during the beginning of COVID like yeah, it was maybe. halted by COVID and then because it's a 2020 film so it's like uh, I, I think I even read somewhere that a lot of people caught COVID on set so it's just like I think that might attribute to my noticing certain like chemistry moments where I was just like, you know, Harper, like Harper and Abby don't always like seem like a great couple. And it, it's, yeah. it's kind of just because there's, there's some like, there's some, some like connection lost there. And it might just be because that with COVID guidelines, they weren't able to rehearse as normally as they would be able to. Yeah, maybe. Um, In fact, there was a couple it, of times where I could have sworn that when they were doing the over the shoulder of Mackenzie Davis to, Kristen Stewart that it was not Mackenzie Davis. I was like, right, yeah, yeah, and that it, I, I felt very that much too. could have happened, like you know, because of rules. Yeah, right, and and you know, I, for for all of that, keeping all of that in mind, it's it's really well done. Like Clea Duvall handled a pandemic shoot pretty freaking well, I'd say. Yeah, uh, I still, again, I don't want to. I don't. I know it sounds like I'm shooting on the film or in a couple of spots here, but I really did like it. It's really I funny. Did enjoy it. I enjoyed the message. Um, the, you know the 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 story is beautiful. I love me a good romance, and I like that. I like how the romance ends because you know you have you have one character in particular, Harper, who has you know done some pretty shitty things throughout the movie. Yeah. But you you really do understand where it's coming oh, yeah. from at the end. Like as, you do you someone, do understand the viewpoint. As someone who has only recently come out as as bisexual to their mm-hmm. parents, um, you know, it's not like I didn't even I could carp- uh, compartmentalize it a little bit better because right I what I am in a heterosexual relationship, but like at a certain point I was like okay, but I'm still like keeping this away from them. So I, I yeah. do understand Harper's fear of what will happen when she does that. Right. <clears throat> Especially with her with her parents. It's really well established yeah. how egocentric her, her parents are. And you know, and, and her whole family has has so much drama and everything. It's like it, it all makes sense. Like you really do get it. I was 
excuse me, I was very fortunate that my parents are very, very like just you know laissez faire. They don't care. <laughs> they were just like, oh well, that's good. Like, how how do we how do we you know how do we refer to you? Yeah. <laughs> like, what pronouns do you use? And I was like, this is amazing. But that's like, great. yeah, I I do understand that I have a a very you know better better version of that than most other people right. like it, it's even, it can be a terrifying even dan levy in the, in the movie it, like, yeah expresses yeah. everybody's journey is different yeah uh, like and, and that's his that's his beautiful scene too yeah. by the way is when he has yeah. that in that moment and it's, it's really it's good. good yeah yeah so i give it i give it three stars i, I definitely recommend it it's it's i don't i didn't hear anything about it and so I'm happy that it was uh, put in by the the, the Patreon, uh, Don and Mike. Yeah. Because I would not have watched this, I don't think, otherwise. Well, I probably would have because I love Kristen Stewart. But otherwise, I don't think I would have seen this. <laughs> you know, it wouldn't have popped up on my radar. Yeah, I'm not so sure. Me either, unless I caught wind that uh, Dan Levy was good in it. Um, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I think that it's a bad title <laughs> to yeah. an okay oh my movie. God, yeah. I think that somebody w- can very easily pass over this movie because of the title. And that that's a shame because I think the message is, is it's, it's better than the movie. Honestly, uh, I, yeah. I really enjoyed the message. Uh, and, and it came in an all right holiday package. <laughs> <laughs> I give it a face. I did enjoy it. So I, I, if somebody wanted to sit down and watch it, I'd watch it again. Yeah, I probably would. But yeah, let's uh, let's take a soda pop, right? A soda pop. And come right. back, come back with uh, what is clearly one of my favorite movies of all time. Since I said at the beginning that <laughs> we were talking one of them. <laughs> well, we'll be right back. Oh, we did that. I love you. Every day I feel a little bit older. <sighs> a little bit. That's good because you are. Well, fuck. Done, done, got <laughs> physics. Done, did, son. <coughs> done, did. Mm, excuse me. Are we, uh, are we back, Rooney? Back, Rooney, Danny? I do think we are. Oh my goodness, let's dive on in quick and fast. Quick and fast. Into Carol. Quick and the fast. Quick and fast. Into Carol. Quick Carol. and fast. Just like this relationship at the beginning. Oh, I was going to say, I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it goes for a very long time, hopefully. <laughs> I hope, yeah. Uh, <laughs> based off of a novel by uh, Patricia Highsmith called The Price of Salt, which is on my reading the list. The Price of Salt. Gotten it. That's a completely the price of salt. different title. And I don't know yeah. what it would have to do with this movie. So that's probably I'm sure a good idea yeah. to not call it that. <laughs> yeah, it got republished as Carol. I'm sure there's just oh, like really? a, a metaphor or something in there about the price of salt in the book. Yeah, that just I'm doesn't sure. translate to film well. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, it, the The film is written by Phyllis Nagy and directed by Todd Haynes. Uh, just to get the the background production stuff out of the way, mm. uh, it, it stars it stars Rooney Mara. As a wannabe, uh, I say wannabe. She's a great ph- photographer, yeah. uh, but she's not bought. You know, they don't. They don't. You know, she hasn't really They're sold a lot of her, at her this photos. Point. Yeah, amateur. Yeah, yeah have, there you go. I don't even that's think the they word. have tried to Inspiring. sell it. Inspiring. I think that's part of the story is that they haven't even tried to sell it. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and someday, you know, they they hope to be this big photographer, and they take a lot of candid photos, and a lot of them are pretty damn good. I love it. Uh, but she's working in a department store at the beginning when she meets uh, Carol, played by Kate Blanchett. Uh, this beautiful, uh, slightly older woman. There's an age difference well between dressed, them. I don't know, like uh, you know, 10, 15 years. Uh, well moneyed. <laughs> well moneyed, well dressed, well mannered. Yeah. Uh, and, and <laughs> she's, got, she's got a good <laughs> sense of humor. And, and she's just alluring immediately to. to Therese. I don't think I said uh, Rooney Mara's character's name. Therese. Um, and, you know, Therese is just like, 
it somehow just like immediately wooed you know it's like almost like love at first sight it's a very beautiful romance in that regard and uh they they immediately start up a friendship you know uh uh carol accidentally leaves her gloves behind at the department store and and therese is like i'm gonna use this to to reach out to her to you know try to to see her again and so what ends up blossoming from their friendship is is a beautiful relationship uh but it's in the 1920s uh, around those parts, uh, I don't remember if it's actually. I'm 1920s. pretty sure it's Maybe like it's 1940s. The 40s or 50s. There was yeah, it's later. yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. 52. That's right. It's, she was not driving 52. like this was, uh, this brand new Cadillac. Yeah. Uh, Carol yeah, was like late 1940s, and uh, yeah, it's it. They have to keep the relationship pretty hush hush because obviously, back in the 1940s kind of frowned upon i guess yeah uh, I, I, guess. I guess you know what i mean, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> but but uh, uh i think it was still the problem illegal. another problem at this point oh yeah 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 and another another big problem is that carol is going through a divorce herself mm-hmm. um she is Harge. she is married to Harge. Harge. yeah what Harge, is that Harge. name Harge. Harge. It was short for something. He he said, "Do the herdert, 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 herdert." Hi, I'm remember. herdert. You can call me Harge. I'm herdert. You can call me Harge, man. Yeah, it was such a dumb name. Uh, but he's he's played by <laughs> Kyle Chandler. Um, and together, uh, Carol and and Harge have a daughter uh, whose name I don't remember. Uh, Nikki. Um, what was it? I said Nikki, but. That could be a lie. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't actually remember this child in the movie. Oh. Rindy. 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 I knew it was a, it's, a, a Y at the such end. A, such another weird name. I'm sorry. Herge and Rindy. Herge and, and Rindy. Guy They're Carol. rich people names, okay? You wouldn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm, too, I'm too underclassed. <laughs> They're uh, fucking terrible. Yeah, Herge, Herge and... Oh yeah, yeah. Harge and Carol—they're going through a divorce. Um, irreconcilable, irre- irreconcilable differences, whatever you would call that. Yeah, something um, like that. Yeah, uh, back yeah, then, like, a judge, it's a long. I it's mean, a big still long today, word. they ha- in some states they have the power to be like, yeah, that's not a good enough reason. You're still married. Yup, can't do that. No, no, no. Yeah, and. Uh, and and Harge already suspects uh, his wife of homosexuality. Oh, I don't. I think um, it's less of a suspect. He knows that and more of a no. It, yeah, I think yeah. he knows that she is. Uh, yeah, th- at least about Abby. She's had a relationship in the past. Yeah, yeah. She, he yeah, at least with, knows with Sarah about Paulson. Ab- yeah, Sarah Paulson's character, Abby Gearhart. Right. Yeah, and and Abby is is Rindy's godmother. That's right. And Carol's best friend. And you know, you find out eventually through the story that the relationship between Carol and Abby was kind of like a spur of the moment fling. Yeah, you know, it's it's not like they they love each other, but they love each other as As basically best best friends. friends I think that yeah, sisters at heart. I think Sarah Paulson's (laughs) character said they knew each other since they were like ten or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's just childhood friends, you know. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. Yeah. They just but realized you, they you were know, You gain insight again. from... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, pretty much. And, and, and you know, Carol uh, Carol is trying to have this, this relationship with Therese, but trying to do so discreetly. And, you know, it, there's it's just beautiful how everything goes along. Therese is also trying to live her life. You know, she's trying to do candid photography as well as, right. you know, there's a lot of boys in her life who are trying to woo her. Uh, and so, you know, she's, she's struggling with some of that, or she's got to deal, deal with the, the, the men of the age. Yeah, I got a couple of names to be like, for, uh, yeah. for that. Uh, the main one who it seems like she might actually live with as like a roommate. Uh, it takes place in New York yeah. and rent is expensive in New York. And, you know, sharing apartments was not uncommon uh, ever. Right. Um, so, Jack Lacey, his name is Richard Simcoe, 
And um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that's important. It just sounds like a sounds like a preppy business. Yeah, name, it like does. Simcoe. <laughs> uh, and he always like no matter how down they dress Jack Lacey, he always just looks like. Uh, a, a rich dude to me. <laughs> I, know, I know. Yeah, he really does have classic rich guy yeah. vibes. <laughs> um, <laughs> not a bad thing, I guess. Not you a bad know? thing. Like, no, it's just <laughs> I, I don't know. He's got that uh, that clean look to him. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it might be also that the most recent thing that I've actually seen him in is not this, but um, oh shit, what is it called? Uh, White Lotus, which is an uh, oh, HBO yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Max original, and I'll, I'll talk about that hopefully speaking next of, Fingers and Hash. Speaking of Aubrey Plaza. <laughs> speaking of Aubrey Plaza. So, Jack Lacey's in the first season, Aubrey Plaza's in the second season. I'll explain more. Oh, interesting. I don't want to spoil the relationship. I think this story is very beautiful. Yes. Uh, just needless to need needless to say, there's some drama. There's some really good tension. Yeah, uh, the law is involved. And, and, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because uh, Kyle Chandler Herge 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 is like yeah. He he just gets you know since they're divorcing and they have a kid, you know custody is a thing, right? And and Herge becomes dead set on wanting full custody and no visitation. Yeah, and and with homosexuality being the way it was looked upon it back in the the forties, he starts working a good case yeah. to to get full custody. They called it and a morality just, clause. Oh. oh, thank you. Yeah, Jesus, it's awful. Yeah, and, but that's and it's how just, it was viewed it, until very recently. I know. Yeah, and, it's still and viewed like, that and, way by some, by many. I would yeah, say. Yeah, sadly. But that's that's the beauty of this story, though, is is how well it handles that. How well you you see this this blossoming romance in this world of just constant harassment. Yeah, and and it's just, it's so wonderfully told. Todd Haynes and uh, his vision, at least directorially, is beautiful. Phyllis Nagy's adaptation. I haven't read the book, but I can say that the adaptation is fucking amazing. I love I love everything about this, and I, as I've said before, I'm a sucker for a good romance. Yeah. That's my favorite type of film. I love me a good Audrey Hepburn movie. Um, this one is the the one romance that lives up to like the Audrey Hepburn movies. Like if if I look back at all the my favorite like all my favorite ro- like rom coms and romances and everything, it's basically just Audrey Hepburn and then Carol is just hanging out in there, <laughs> and it's fucking phenomenal. I love the ending. The ending is so beautiful. Like. It's told in medias res, and when you when you're brought oh, yeah. into the movie, Forgot yeah, about that it yeah, is a very interesting it, it, the, medias res because you don't really good use, use that be- with with romances though either. I feel like no, and, and it's so it's so subtle too because yeah. it's it's not it, there's no time introduction. Right, you know, it just cuts into um, uh, Therese and Carol at dinner together. And you only see Carol. You can only see Carol at first. You know, you can barely like Therese is just not, not facing the yeah. camera, and then it's just this guy walks in there and just recognizes Therese from behind. You know, he's just like Therese or Terry. I think he said. I think he says Terry, mm-hmm. like because they couldn't call her a nickname. And like she like you know she looks around and you can tell that her and Carol are in this this big moment that something just happened. Mm. And that's how the movie opens right. is, is they say goodbye and they walk away and then it cuts to like 1947 and it, right. it's just uh, Therese working at the department store. It doesn't even tell you that it's a, that it's a in media stress. No, it just, no. you know, it's a cold open. Yeah. And I love it because the first time I didn't even, I didn't even pay attention to it. I've seen this movie. Like, I think this is my third time. I, I don't watch it that much, which is weird because I love it a lot, but it's, it's one that I just well, don't want to soak, like, soak all the fun out of it. Yeah, there really is. But like I just I just love watching it this time and realizing that it wasn't immediate rest and everything and like and focusing on why they made that choice and then when you find out what that conversation was and what happened right when they cut in because the the movie literally opens right after a certain line is said beautiful choice once once you recognize it all yeah. and realize everything and know what that line is it's just like I don't know it's just very moving and then when you get to the end. And in that final shot, it's it's again, it's very subtle, 
There's not a lot of pomp and circumstance. It's just a, a beautiful lingering shot with a with a smile that just spreads. And it's it's when as the smile spreads, you're just like oh, warm hearted. You're so happy. It's beautiful romance. Obviously, um, damn, it's only been like ten minutes. I hate to just close on Carol so quickly. Well, I mean, you know, when <laughs> it's good. And you, I know. And so, like, the thing is, is like, if we say any more about the story, you're missing, right? That's what you're missing from the movie. You're missing then. the experience, yeah. Um, so <laughs> I just hate that we talked to Happy a season for like twenty five to thirty minutes, and then we're <laughs> gonna close on Carol in like ten okay. to fifteen. So, honestly, the story is less complicated. In, in this yeah it, it really is so it's just this yeah i, I mean yeah we could talk a little bit it, how, it wanna... so like I, d- I didn't really want to say this but they do break it off or rather carol breaks it off rather right uh rather early in the relationship not early in the film early in the relationship then therese is trying to make a life for herself and you know, she, she does do the arts, and she does start hanging out more with her men friends, which that was something I thought was interesting, is that uh, yeah. Therese, Therese, Therese rather, only had male friends. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was a really interesting choice for the storytelling. I think she was just like, yeah, I feel like it might have been like a, a subconscious, like just trying to be more normal. Right. Cause like she, yeah. she feels so very off from society. She's very quiet. She's very, very closed off and everything. And so I feel like that was her, her way of trying to be like, well, if I hang out with all of these guys, eventually one of them will date me. Right. And eventually one of them will just marry me and I'll, I'll feel more normal then. But right. she, she just knows deep down that, that, that again, she's not, there's nothing abnormal about oh, her. Obviously, that's yeah. just not who she is. Yeah, yeah. She just, she just, uh, she just knows deep down that she's just not into these guys because they're yeah, all just well, kind of jockey, <laughs> silly people. She, I feel like she's not into them, obviously sexually, um, but I do think that she might be like just a touch butch. Like maybe she likes talking sports with these guys. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. And, yeah, and maybe maybe she. I feel like I feel like Richard. At least she's she's actually friends with. I yeah. feel like the other ones. She's not really. <clears throat> she's more just like yeah, sure. Like you're. I think she's connected to them, but I feel like only Richard was like the one. I think if I'm if I'm remembering them correctly, Richard is the one that was like, "I want to marry you, and you're going to come back to me in two weeks and be real pissed okay, off." Okay, I wasn't. That's Jack Lacey. It wasn't that one. Okay, the John a- Magaro. Uh, he is. Uh, yeah, he's somebody's little brother. Maybe even Jack Lacey's little brother. Not sure. Uh, but yeah. he tries to kiss her at one point, and then uh, he's like, "Hey, listen, I you didn't want to have that kind of relationship with me. That's fine. You don't have to worry about me. We yeah. can be friends." Uh, and I thought that was. You know, that was cool of him, uh, yeah, yeah. especially for the time and how Jack Lacey's character acted. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he went a little a little off. Yeah, and he's, Jack yeah, it's, Lacey's it's, just good at playing that, at playing that character. I know. Like, angry <laughs> at this really woman is. character. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad, <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> but yeah, I I just obviously I give this movie four stars. It's it's easily one of my favorite romances. It's a crazy good, recommendation. Maybe. Like if you have not seen Carol, I mean it's one of those films that I just love showing to people. Like I I would like if somebody I know has been like hasn't seen Carol, I'd be like, well let's watch Carol. You know I fucking love this movie. So hmm. it has some sadness, but I feel like once you get to that ending, the ending just leaves you yeah. so freaking happy. Yeah, like it's it's so good. It is a good. Yeah, ending. four stars. I. It is a good. I don't <laughs> know. Good. I don't know if I'm gonna give it a face and a half. This is my first time around. If I watch it again, that might change. So I think right. for now that I'm gonna give it a face, 
and say that it's a very good movie. Right. That's yeah. fair. That's fair. It'll change. It def- you know, it's It'll definitely die. a very It'll good change. LGBT movie. It's one of my favorite LGBT oh, yeah. movies. It's uh they've they've done mini pools, you know, it's like what's the best LGBT movie? And it's it's always either like um uh Brokeback Mountain or or uh, Carol. I, well, like, I've never actually seen Brokeback Mountain, now I think about it. What? We'll have to do it on the show, I guess. We'll have to do it. Dude, there was I such a stigma around that movie where where I grew up. It just never yeah. happened. I'm, I'm pretty sure I watched like, I feel like I watched that with my parents. <laughs> like, I, I, I feel like I, I feel like I definitely, like, watched that movie with my parents at some point. I don't think it was in theaters, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I love that movie. It's it, Well, I mean, I haven't watched it in ten years, so I guess I'll have to go back to it. But I remember loving that movie when I watched it, so. Well, we'll Jake watch Jake Gyllenhaal, it. Heath Ledger. Wait, was it Heath Ledger? I, I no, thought Heath it was Ledger. Heath Ledger, but I didn't no, it was Jake Gyllenhaal. I might be wrong about Jake Gyllenhaal. Maybe that was the one I'm wrong about. No, Jake Gyllenhaal, Heath Ledger, and, and Michelle Williams, and Anne Hathaway, and Randy Quaid, and David Harbour. Oh and my they're goodness. they're all gay together. I didn't, Dave, I didn't know David Harbour was in it. That's completely <laughs> They broke that's the hilarious. back of the mountain. And Linda Cardellini. Velma. Wow. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk God, that this movie soon. has everybody. We'll talk that movie yeah, we'll soon for some reason there. or another. Um, and Anna Ferris. <laughs> Carol wins. Carol wins this. Carol wins. Oh, it, yeah. I don't think it was quite fair, but I do think that it was nice to watch these two gay holiday movies. Yeah, with happy endings both. Yes, with happy endings both. Yeah. For sure. Because I feel like. I feel like I mean it's it's very typical of romances to go for the the tragedy, you know, because it's just like that'll make them remember it, you know. If 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 it doesn't end the way you specifically want, like La La Land, where it's just like, oh, that was the ending. No, my goodness, could have been could have been something. <laughs> but I mean, I love La La Land. We'll talk that someday too, of course. But yeah, I, I really I really like that both of these these holiday lesbian romances have happy endings. Yeah, so nice. Yeah. Thank it's really you good for the, the holiday season. Uh, so much for the suggestions, Mike and Don. We really enjoyed them. Uh, mm-hmm. If you enjoyed this potato pick, or if you didn't and think you could do better, either way, yeah. you can go on down to patreon.com slash green and faceless and, you know, check it out. Just check it out. Check it out, babes. <laughs> All right. That's Get the on show. Down. It is. I am the Green Traveler from Wars. And I am the faceless Alilio. Safe travels and good night. Green and Faceless on the Couch is a proud production of Fiction Works 19. Are you a fan of the show? Feel free to contact us at greenandfacelessfans at gmail.com or visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash greenandfaceless. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Or Rate us on Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much for listening.